Hey, wait a minute, this is Yoshi's Woolly World, but the Wii U is not even hooked up. The game's being played on Windows on a PC using a PlayStation 4 DualShock controller. In this video, I'll show you how to set up Wii U games on your PC and play them using the Simu emulator, so that you too can start playing your favorite Wii U games on your PC in just minutes. All the steps are included, and we're starting now. Any follow-up notes for the video will be listed in the description below. First, download the Simu emulator. It's linked in the description for easy access. It requires 64-bit windows. Scroll down on the page until you get to the blue download box and then click to download it. You'll also want to download the Simu hook software. This adds extra support for controllers and motion controls in the Simu emulator. Scroll down on this page until you get to the download section and then click on the latest version to download it. In the downloads folder, uncompress the simu.zip file you downloaded. Then delete the zip file to eliminate clutter and confusion moving forward. Now go into the simu folder that you just uncompressed. Right click on the simu executable file, then click on properties. Navigate to the compatibility tab, then enable the option disable full screen optimizations. Click on change high DPI settings, then enable use this setting to fix scaling programs for this program instead of the one in settings. Enable override high DPI scaling behavior, scaling performed by application. Save these settings by clicking OK, and then close out properties by clicking Apply and OK. Go back to your downloads folder, and you'll need to extract the SimuHook zip file contents directly into the Simu folder that you've already extracted. You want those contents from SimuHook in the Simu folder. When you're done with this step, your Simu folder should look like this. It should have the Simu and the SimuHook files all in the Simu folder. Then you can delete the SimuHook zip file. Let's launch the emulator for the first time. Go into the Simu folder, then double click on simu.exe to launch it for the first time. It will add some needed files into the simu folder as it launches. And depending upon your screen resolution, you might get a very small window. Let's take a closer look. The cfw.guide website, which this is largely based on, recommended creating a folder called MLC01. You'll see it in the downloads folder shortly, but if you look here, if you don't assign a path to it, it's gonna take care of it for you automatically now, so you don't have to worry about this. Just click on Download Community Packs. And once they're downloaded, in the bottom right corner, click on Next to continue. There's one option to activate here, and that's to enable automatic updates. Check this box, then navigate down to the bottom right corner and click on Close to close the Quick Start Setup. At this point, leave the window open so that we can properly configure a controller to work with the emulator. In this example, I'm using a PlayStation 4 DualShock controller, so I'll need to download DS4 Windows. But you can also use other controllers like Xbox and Switch controllers, and I'll link those processes in the description. This site's linked in the description. Come down to the Download button and click on it. This takes you to the GitHub and to the official DS4 Windows download section. On that page, scroll down to the Assets section, and then click on DS for Windows and download the zip file for 64-bit Windows. One quick thing to check in the emulator before installing the software for the controller. Look in the bottom right corner and just make sure that you see SimuHook listed there. If you don't see it there, close the emulator, make sure that you uncompress the SimuHook files correctly into the Simu folder and relaunch the emulator. Since we're using a PlayStation 4 controller, go ahead and uncompress the contents of DS for Windows. Then delete the zip file when you're done. Go into the DS for Windows folder you just uncompressed, and you may have to go an additional level depending upon how you uncompressed it. Run the DS for Windows application by double-clicking. If you see this pop-up message, you need to install the Microsoft.NET Framework for things to continue forward. Click the Yes button and you'll be taken directly to the .NET Framework portion of the Microsoft website. On this site, it's a simple matter of just scrolling down. You're gonna need the version for Windows, and you're gonna need to pick the version that matches your version of Windows. But of course, if you're running this, you're supposed to be running X64 already, so pick X64. Go ahead and connect the PlayStation 4 controller by USB. In the Downloads folder, run the executable for the installer for .NET. You can run it as an administrator or without, depending on your access to the machine. From here, just click Install, let it do its magic. When you're done, close it out and delete the installer. 
With the .NET Framework installed, now you can go back into DS for Windows and go run the DS for Windows application again. In a pop-up window that appears, you'll be asked where you want to install profiles and settings. Click on Program Folder to continue. Then if you're asked to give the program administrative privileges, do so. With the PlayStation 4 controller connected and recognized, go up to Step 1 and click it. This installs a necessary driver that you're going to need for your PlayStation controller to work with the Simu emulator. Click the I Accept button and then click on Install to install the necessary driver. When it's done, click the Finish button. The main interface can look kind of smallish again depending upon your resolution, so let's zoom in and take a closer look. Across the top of the window, there are a number of different tabs for choices that you can make. You want to navigate over to the one that says Settings and click on the Settings tab to continue. Click the checkbox that says Enable Server 127.0.0.1. Now you can minimize DS for Windows, but you do need to leave it open and running in the taskbar below. Now either maximize the Simu emulator or open it back up if you closed it earlier. In the list of tabs across the top of the emulator, Click on the one that says Options, then scroll down in the list of choices to Input Settings and select it. In the list of choices for Emulate Controller, click on the drop-down and then choose Wii U Gamepad. In the drop-down for Controller API, click on it with the mouse and then choose X Input from the list of choices. Under the Controller drop-down, click it and choose Controller Number 1. Then go back up and give the profile a custom name of your choice. Although note here that I did find later that single name profiles tend to work better. You may need to expand the window out from the corner on the bottom right in order to access all of the remaining features, including button mapping. Button mapping your PlayStation DualShock controller to work with your Wii U emulator is as simple as this. First configure the A, B, X, Y buttons, and these are going to be the X, triangle, circle, and square button on your PlayStation controller. Then set up the left axis, and then the right axis, or right thumbstick and then the D-pad. When you're done, come up to the top center of the screen and click on the Save button. Then come over to the top right corner and click the red X to close input settings. Click on the Options tab again, and this time come down to Gamepad Motion Source. Hover over to the right and select your gamepad, and then slide over to the right and select By Slot. The emulator's set up, but what about games? I'll show you how to use your jailbroken Wii U system to dump games for use in the emulator. Folks from the country know that a dumpling is a cooked ball of dough or a term of endearment for someone you love, but this dumpling is all about dumping your Wii U games so that you can use them on a computer. The dumpling app is linked in the description below and available on the GitHub. Download the zip file from the Git. In your downloads folder, extract the dumpling.zip file and once it's extracted, delete the zip file from the downloads folder. Pay close attention here because the structure for the folders and files here is important. Go into Dumpling, then Wii U, and then Apps, and here is where you want to copy the Dumpling folder. We're going to use that same navigational structure on the SD card of your modded Wii U. Insert the SD card from your Wii U into your computer. Navigate to the SD card and double-click into it. Let's slow the roll here for just a minute so you get this into the right place on the SD card. First, double click into the Wii U folder on the SD card. Inside that folder, go into the Apps folder. And then inside the Apps folder is where you want to paste the dumpling folder that you copied from your Downloads folder. Now you can safely eject the SD card from your computer, put it back into your Wii U system, and power on your Wii U system. With your Wii U system powered on, insert the disc of your choice. Make sure to give the game adequate time to prepare and load any game update content. You can use an SD card or a USB drive, but if you use a USB drive and it's a hard drive, it has to be externally powered. And either one of them needs to be formatted in FAT32 format. In this case, I'm using a USB drive that's just a regular stick drive. When you insert a USB drive, you'll be prompted to format it. Don't format it through the console. Tap Cancel. To launch Dumpling and to begin the disk copy process, navigate to the Homebrew Launcher and select it to launch it. You'll see Dumpling in the list of choices inside Homebrew Launcher. Select it, and then select Load to launch Dumpling. Inside the Dumpling main menu, 
the selection arrow should already be on Dump a Game Disc. Press the A button to select it. It should take a moment to look for a game disc, and since you already have a game disc still in there, eject it and reinsert it. You'll be given the choice to choose the destination for where you want to dump the game files. If you're going to use the SD card, you're all set. But if you want to use the USB drive like I'm doing in this case, then simply change this option here to say USB drive. Then press the A button to start the process. You'll be given the choice of checking the size or not checking the size. It only takes a moment to check the size of the actual game that you're planning to dump, so just select yes with the A button. And as you can see here, it found that the game disk is seven gigabytes. Then it begins the dump process. Be aware that this can take quite a bit of time, upwards of over an hour, depending upon the size of the disk and the speed of your storage media. But once it's done, you'll have a copy of your game and all of the updates you downloaded. Now you can close out Dumpling. Press the B button on the Wii U gamepad, and when prompted, select Yes. This is also going to shut down the Wii U system. Then you can take out either the SD card or USB drive with your dumped game on it and put it back into your PC. I would definitely recommend copying your dumped game files over from your storage to your PC. You can grab the Dumpling folder from your storage media and copy it and then paste it over to the location of your choice on your PC. I just use the music folder here because I use this computer specifically for doing mod demonstrations. Hey, remember this guy? It's the Simu emulator. Maximize it or start it back up if you've closed it previously. Click on File, navigate down to Install, Game, Update, or DLC, and click to select it. Navigate to the location where you stored your dumped games on your computer. You'll see two or more folders here depending upon the content that you dumped. In this case, I have games and updates. Let's start by installing the game itself, in this case, Yoshi's Woolly World. Double click into the game folder, and inside it, you should find a folder called Meta, M-E-T-A. Double click into that folder, and you'll find the meta.xml file. That's the file you want to open. After a couple of minutes of install time, the game will be loaded into the emulator. Then you can click on OK to continue. And if you have any optional game updates you want to copy, go back to File, Go back to install game update or downloadable content again and select it. This time you'll need to navigate back to the original folder that your dump is in, but instead of going to game, go to updates. Then go into the game name, go into the meta folder, and again open meta.xml. And this should go by very quickly for game updates. Just click on OK when it's finished. Now you'll see the game you just installed and any other games you've installed listed in the interface. Let's look at a few settings that will add value to each individual game that you load. Go back to the Options tab, then scroll down through the list of choices to General Settings and select it. In the list of tabs at the top, select Graphics, and make sure that Graphics API is set to Vulkan. Underneath that, make sure the Graphics device is set to your graphics card, in this case, an NVIDIA GeForce 1050 Ti. For VSync, Select the drop-down and pick Match Emulated Display Experimental. Then click the checkbox for Async Shader Compiler. With the graphics settings complete, go back up to the tabs at the top and click on Audio. There's only one thing that you need to change here. Change the API from Direct Sound to X-Audio 2. With these settings complete, click the red X button in the top right corner to close General Settings. And one last recommendation for settings I have is to go to Options and turn on Full Screen. Now you can launch the game of your choice. Highlight the game with the cursor and double click to launch it. And you'll be playing your favorite Wii U games on your PC with motion control in no time. But there's more fun to be had still. Check out this video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below for more great content.